Hello. Hello. Oh, hi. Okay. I had to make sure that everything was working. I just want to know why didn't anybody tell me last time that like I was like I was sitting way too close to my microphone. It was like I could hear so much like breathiness and stuff. Like why didn't anyone tell me? Who is going to tell me? You guys are supposed to have my back guy. Like come on. No, it was okay though. I was just like listening to the VOD because I was trying to see if I said anything funny. But like I don't know. How's everybody doing today? I'm waiting patiently. I'm waiting patiently. Turn up. Okay, still a little bit of poppage. Turn up the noise gate. Okay, because I'm like sitting so far away from my microphone right now. And uh, yeah. Okay, so turn up the... I'm putting you in the void. I'm putting you in the void. I'm putting you in the void. If I'm turning it up, am I making the numbers smaller or bigger? Probably bigger, right? How is, did that do anything? I think so. Also, I could probably try down on the little bit, maybe. Are we good? Is that better? Too much noise gate. Okay. Put it back to default. Put it back to default. How is that? I hope you all like being in the void, by the way. Okay, you're good. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Back to just chatting. So, I actually don't know how long this PowerPoint is going to be. Um, it might not be that long at all. I just really like talking about this particular concept in marine ecology or and just like ecology in general. I think it's really I don't have the kissy Mary Mo anymore, so I'm just going to threaten you with syringe. I don't think you should do that. I don't think that's very nice. I think you should be nice to me because I'm your wife. But anyway, as I was saying, um this is a PowerPoint that I put together about one of my favorite things uh in marine ecology um i really really like ecology and i like marine biology one of my favorite things in the whole world um and for anyone who doesn't know ecology is basically a branch of biology that focuses on like interactions and stuff with environments so it's like ecosystems as the name would imply um and uh I really love questions. I really love being able to like explain things because you don't get to just like talk about random science shit that you like every day. So if at any point I'm talking about something and you want to ask a question, I would have no problem with stopping and explaining it. Um, the concepts that we're talking about today are not particularly dense, but um, you never know. I don't want to assume that people have a, a certain level of knowledge about things so if you guys are ready we can get started so let me see if i have this let me see if i have this set up right i think i should yes look at this beautiful presentation that i put together in google slides shout out to free programs um so Today we are talking about keystone species. Um, what is a keystone species? Well, we'll get to that later. Don't rush me. This is my obligatory disclaimer that I'm not like a professional. I'm not an expert. I just am autistic and I like did my research and uh, all of my research and all the things I used to get my information is going to be at the end of the presentation i did put my references i'm citing my sources and some of them are even apa cited um but i got busy or so yeah so it's not all apa cited that uh, hello deary five 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 that's funny. It looks like those PowerPoints I must watch at work. 
Well, I hope this one's at least a little bit more interesting than the ones you have to watch at work. <clears throat> All right, so here are some important terms that I'm going to be using a lot. Um, one of those is primary producer. Um, for anyone who's not familiar with food chains and food webs and stuff, a primary producer is an organism that creates its own food and does not rely on other creatures. So think things like plants that use photosynthesis or like algae, which also sometimes use photosynthesis. Um, and then I'm also going to be talking a lot about trophic levels, uh, which is a level in this hierarchical system of energy flow in an ecosystem. So a similar level means a similar function in food chain and relationships to primary producers. So a grasshopper, a bee, an ant, a butterfly, those all consume like trees and crop plants and stuff like that. Um, and they all kind of fill a similar ecological niche. They all have kind of a similar role in the food chain. Um, so that is what that means. Uh, I think I meant to put more terms, but I forgot. So if any big words come up, I'll just explain them. Okay? Okay? Okay. I'm not going to I'm not going to let you guys get lost. I'm holding your hand, okay? I'm holding my hand out. Take it. All right. So, for a very long time, the idea of food chains was a lot different than how we view it today. And it's kind of crazy that it wasn't really that far along. It was kind of crazy that it wasn't really that long ago, but even in the 1950s and 60s, it was actually widely believed that the number of predators was limited by the amount of available prey in a given ecosystem. So they thought that um, the reason that there weren't, you know, hundreds of bugs like, or no, hundreds of like crows and uh, sharks and things like that. The reason that there weren't hundreds of sharks and wolves and shit running around was because there's actually not enough prey to sustain that many. Um, but in the 1960s, a so-called green world hypothesis emerged. Um, and so the green world hypothesis was pretty revolutionary for its time. Think about it this way. When you look outside at all the trees and all the grass and all of those wonderful things that are green, they're there and they're green. And so scientists who developed the green world hypothesis thought to themselves, well, if the number of predators How is the number of predators not in direct correlation to prey? Sounds surprising. Okay, well we're we're gonna get there. That's the that's the cool thing. We're I'm so excited to get there. All right, so when you look outside, everything is green. And if you uh Scientists who developed the green world hypothesis basically thought to themselves, if the number of predators are limited by the amount of prey, then why are the leaves still green? Because in theory, shouldn't all of the primary consumers, all of the herbivores, have eaten all of the plants by now? Um, so the green world hypothesis was this belief that turned the conventional belief on its head. It's not the prey that limits the number of predators. It's the number of predators that limits the prey. Hence why the world is still green. Because all these wolves out there are eating all of the, I don't know, they're eating deer, which eat grass. Or maybe they eat goats, which eat grass. Think of things that eat grass. Something is eating them. And so there was one guy, this one awesome guy. His name was Robert Payne. Um... He was inspired by this hypothesis, and he sought to connect the two ideas throughout his research, throughout uh, a lot of his life, actually. Um, but a lot of it started in the early 1960s, where he performed an experiment that completely changed people's perceptions of food chains and what he called trophic cascades. So we're going to take a little break, see, oops, and we're going to talk about Robert T. Payne. He was born in Cambridge, Massachusetts in 1933. Um, and he was an ecologist. He got his doctorate in ecology from the University of Michigan. Um, after his time there, he partook in a postdoctoral study with the Scripps Institution of Oceanography in California. And then in 1962, he became an assistant professor at the University of Washington in Seattle. And that's where things are going to get interesting. During his time in Seattle, something crazy is going to happen. I'm telling you, something crazy is going to happen. Um, he began to travel 
to the rocky intertidal zones and tide pools on the coast of Washington, where he observed the ecosystems present there. And in 1963, he decided to perform an experiment to see how these ecosystems would fare after removing its top predator. I'm going to take a break here to talk about tide pools because I really, really, really like tide pools. Tide pools occur on a stretch of shore called something I've already mentioned, the intertidal zone, which is just the little portion of the seashore that's covered and uncovered by tides daily. Um, and the really cool thing about uh, tide pools and why this especially was a good place for Payne to conduct his experiments is because the ecosystems in tide pools are unique and constantly changing. They cover a really small area, sometimes only a few feet or some yards of shoreline, yet things in tide pools are always changing and just like constantly changing. Um, in this way, they are pretty extreme. Honestly, they may not seem like extreme environments, but they are extreme environments. Um, so life that develops to live in tide pools has to have special adaptations for the constantly changing conditions. Like that, I'd say the main danger for us would be the prey reproducing. Yeah, exactly. And that's kind of what they were saying is like, oh, well, if there was too much prey taking up all of the resources, then we wouldn't have plants. We wouldn't have stuff like that. And I actually will talk about a little bit later how too much prey will actually kind of devastate ecosystems. Um, so another reason that tide pools are really interesting is because they're really easily observed examples for ecological processes that happen on larger levels. So to view the differences between ecosystems and habitats in other places, a biologist might have to travel miles. Like if you want to see the difference between deserts or plains, or if you wanted to see the difference between grasslands and forests. But um, in tide pools, you can actually really easily see the differences between different little ecosystems because different parts of the rocky shoreline experience different amounts of tides each day. So like in the picture on the screen, you can see down at the bottom, there's lots of water there. Um, and so there are different creatures like the sea star or the sponge. Um, and then you go up a little bit, they have, it's a different ecosystem. It's an entirely different environment just because it gets a little bit less water than all the way down on the bottom. Going up, it's even more different because they get less water and so on. So in just this little space, you can see huge changes in the kinds of creatures that are present there. These areas, because they're so small and because they change so much and so quickly, they also can be used to view processes such as ecological succession, which is a big word that kind of just means um, the process of how an ecosystem species and habitats change over time. If you think about a typical ecosystem, such as maybe like a forest, ecological succession can take hundreds of years to become a fully developed community. Like if you think about like a forest fire um, that comes through, completely destroys everything. So it's nothing but just, you know, flat land, no trees. It would take at least 150 years for tons and tons of trees to kind of spring up in the place where they once were. Um, however, in intertidal communities, a log carried by wave can at any point just like crash upon the shore and expose the rock underneath. And then within hours, other creatures will already be coming in and they'll be, uh, my wife just looked at me and it distracted me. Yeah, I can write it down. The word that I'm defining right now, well, let me see if I can put it in the chat real quick is ecological succession. Yeah, I probably should have put oh, this on a whole new slide, but I was I was an eager Ellie. But yeah, so um, if you think about, a for I was talking about forest fires, there we go. If you think about a forest fire, it would take a really long time for the community to become what it once was with all those really tall trees and bushes. But um, in a tide pool, you can actually see that ecosystem start to take shape again within hours. So to put it succinctly, 
tide pools are small ecosystems where biologists can see bigger processes happen in small ways very quickly. And so that is important. And so now we will talk about the sea star removal experiment. Oh my God, I don't have mods. Here, I got it. Banned. Banned. Be gone. Okay, anyway. Um, so now we're going to start talking about the sea star removal experiment that Payne did, Robert Payne did. Um, and here are our most important players in the sea star removal experiment. On the left, we have the ochre sea star. And on the right, we have the California mussel. Um, from his observations, Robert Payne found that the top predator there was the ochre sea star, which fed on many, many different varieties of creatures present on these rocky shorelines such as barnacles and snails, and that it's top competitor for space on the rocks. Because remember, one of the biggest things about tide pools is that space is limited. The California mussel, that was its biggest competitor for space. And so Robert Payne did this experiment, and I have no idea if this audio is going to work. Actually, it's probably not because I didn't. Uh, one second, guys. I think I have to put you in the void again. In the dark. In the dark. Okay. Okay, well, guess what? You're not in the dark anymore. And I think I, think I made it work. But if not, I will just do like a dramatic reading or like a dramatic retelling of... The video I'm about to play. I'm about to play a t I'm about to play a TikTok for you guys. This is how this is how Robert Payne's experiments went. Don't mess with the sea life. Oh my god, it's so loud. <laughs> okay. So did we get that? <laughs> Don't mess with the sea life. See you later, stinky. Let's do an instant replay for anyone who might have missed it. Don't mess with the sea life. See you later, stinky. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So. Waiting for the next slide to come up. Don't no, 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 no. Okay. Yes. Payne decided that to see how the community would react when the top predator was removed. He picked a small portion of the rocks and began to literally pry the ochre sea star off the rocks. And he just like chucked them into the ocean as far as he could. See, point number two. He threw those starfish. Um, Robert Payne, in uh, an interview that I watched, was quoted as saying, It takes a strong wrist and a pry bar. He went out there and he was literally like with a crowbar, like prying sea stars off of the fucking rocks. It's incredible. Um, and so all throughout those summer months, he would go there, take data, and pry off any more sea stars that came back to the area. And much to Robert Payne's surprise, the effects of this were felt even just within a year and a half of him removing all of these sea stars. Um, originally, Professor Payne found that f there were 15 species in these tide pools that he was observing. Um, and it went down to eight just within that year and a half that he was doing this experiment. Um, after removing the top predator, there was an overall decrease in biodiversity. And after seven years, Payne said, quote unquote, it was basically a monoculture. So there was only one or two creatures left on the shorelines. Uh, because the ochre sea star was no longer there to control the populations of other species like the California mussel, they started to completely overrun the space on the rocks and they left no room for any other creatures. Um, and so what he found was basically a confirmation of what he was looking for. It was exactly what he wanted, connecting the idea um, of the green world hypothesis to what they believed before. Uh, the removal of the ochre starfish led to impacts on each species on the rocky shoreline directly and indirectly. 
even species that weren't preyed upon by the starfish were impacted because space on the rock started to be... Oh, hold on. He must have been a dedic dedicated to this hypothesis to peel off sea stars for a year and a half. How long do most marine bio experiments take? So I'm sure you can see this sort of response coming, but honestly, it depends. There are um, not many true experiments that can be done as far as marine bio is concerned. Um, just because of the way that a lot of marine biology takes place on very, very, very large scales. So it's hard to actually do experiments. A lot of marine biology is actually more just like dedicated observation, which I mean, it's kind of what Payne was doing, but he kind of took a, a personal approach. He took a, he took a little bit more of a, a active involvement in this one. Um, I'll actually talk about a little bit later, uh, a quote unquote experiment that was done mostly based on observation, which is really, really common. In Did it cause clear overall damage to the ecosystem? So the answer to that is yes. I think I might have forgot to mention this um, in my uh, uh, earlier in my slideshow, but when Payne was doing these experiments, he would take the sea stars from a part of the shoreline, but he left a lot of the other shoreline completely untouched. So he did have some controlled variables or like just some control groups in this experiment. Um, and so when he removed the sea stars from part of the shoreline, he found that compared to other parts of the shoreline that he left untouched, that's where he saw a lot of the change with the um, California mussels taking up all the space. And so that was the clear overall damage to the ecosystem. When he was taking the um, sea stars out, it created almost a monoculture. There was a lack of bio, or there, yeah, there was a huge lack of biodiversity that happened. Hello, Care. Hi, Care. Care is here to support my autism. But yes, and so uh, I think when I talk a little bit more later on about uh, some other creatures that were. Um, studied when he was looking at keystone species uh there are some really clear effects on the environment that we'll see um let me see if i find this slide but yes pain oh okay i also i just needed to continue reading my notes um so while the removal of the ochre starfish led to impacts on each species uh, he actually did other experiments where he did remove other species from these tide pools as well, but none of them had the same kind of impact as the starfish, which he dubbed a keystone species. I will talk about trophic cascade. The idea of keystone species and trophic cascades or indirect interactions that have quote unquote cascading effects on the ecosystem are ideas in ecology that after being observed in a small scale could then be applied to an even bigger scale, which is kind of what I was talking about earlier, why tide pools are super cool and interesting. Um, he actually met this guy whose name was James Estes, who was doing a bunch of studies on sea otter physiology, and he collaborated with this guy. Um, James Estes was sort of trying to figure out... Um, Hold on, wait. I think I got ahead of myself. I have basically like a whole speech written out, but I keep like going off on my own little tangents. Because I just like, I get too excited. Um, yes, he applied these discover right. He applied these discoveries to sea otters and urchins near Alaska's Aleutian Islands. Payne, after his sea star experiment, began to study urchins in tide pools. And he was looking in these pools where there were no urchins, but there was a lot of kelp. But in other pools with more urchins, there was no kelp at all. So he asked himself, why wasn't there anything controlling the population of urchins? Um, he started working with this guy named James Estes, who initially was performing an observation on sea otter physiology. Um, and additionally, was kind of trying to figure out how Alaska's Aleutian Islands could support such a high population of predators there because the Aleutian Islands are home to lots of different creatures. There are seals, there are eagles, there are other kinds of birds. There's just 
a lot of different creatures going on there. They're also sea otters, obviously. Um, so Payne proposed the question to Estes, why not consider the predator's role in changing the system? Because at first, James was like, oh my gosh, how is the system affecting the predators? Payne was like, no, 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 how are the predators affecting the system? So he encouraged Estes to take this sort of like top-down approach to the flow of food and energy in the ecosystem. So over time, they discussed the possibilities and tried to figure out how they could study the effects of removing sea otters from this whole equation. Obviously, they could not realistically take sea otters from the ocean and throw them God knows where. But Estes knew from his understanding of history of sea otters and the fur trade exactly where they could look. So the fur trade decimated uh, a majority of the sea otter populations in the 1700s, but a few populations still survived. For example, like on Amchitka Island here, the population of sea otters like almost completely recovered from what they were in the 1700s. However, the recovery wasn't completely perfect. Um, and so there were a couple places in the Alaskan island chain where otters had recovered and a couple places where otters had not recovered. So they used these islands to compare the ecosystems with sea otters and the ones without. Uh, and as you may be predicting, they found on the islands where there were sea otters that there were sprawling kelp forests. And sea urchins were common, but they were really small. But on the islands where sea otters were absent, the rocks were green with sea urchins and no kelp. I know I have a picture of a purple sea urchin here, but the sea urchins on the Aleutian Islands were green. So now I'm going to talk about kelp forests because I love kelp forests. How are the predators, or how are the predators, are affecting the system? But that, what, or wasn't that his first experiment, or was he still deepening this idea? Did he already draw conclusions at this point? Um, so that was his first experiment, but he was still deepening this idea, and I think he was looking for more evidence, and he was looking for more, just solid proof of this concept. I think he was at this time where he met James Estes. He was still working on his paper that he would go on to publish, and I also think he just wanted to. Engage someone to a similar project um but yes oh i'm hacking shit around back um what was i saying <clears throat> uh -huh, i have to tap back in okay so the discovery that sea otters almost certainly be connected to kelp forests is very interesting once you take into account the importance of kelp forests and the extreme amount of biodiversity that's fostered there. For those who don't know, kelp is a brown algae that grows in cool coastal waters close to the surface where they can absorb light for photosynthesis. Um, and they grow in these huge forests because they anchor themselves to the rocks near the shore and they just, they just grow. Um, they create many, many, many nooks and crannies that other creatures can take shelter in, um, meaning that they can be home to hundreds, if not thousands of organisms. These organisms can find protection from predators there, and it's also a really safe place for them to breed and spawn. And so a lot of kelp forests are also nursing grounds or spawning grounds and nurseries for lots of different species of creatures. Um... Additionally, kelp forests are responsible for protecting coastlines from storms because they add stability to the rocks and sand and stuff outside the shore. Um, and they, as users of photosynthesis, as photosynthesized heads, they are good for absorbing carbon. So lots and lots of important stuff here. Applying the concepts of keystone species, they were able to see the huge domino effect that spurred just from the removal of one species. In places where there were no otters, there were no kelp forests because there was nothing to control the population of urchins, which then ate the kelp forests. So think about all of those creatures, all of those hundreds of creatures. It's a natural protection for coastlines and living organisms. They sound pretty important. Yes, they are very, very, very important. Do you have a favorite creature that lives in kelp forests? Um, yeah, obviously. You can probably see this coming. I love seals. I 
fucking love seals. Um, any other questions? Care. What is your favorite kind of seal? What a wonderful question, Mary. What is my favorite kind of seal? Um, you know, funny enough, that's actually really, really hard. Uh, I think I like harbor seals and I also like Arctic seals because those are very charismatic in the world of seals. Um, but I have a personal favorite. It's the elephant seal. I love elephant seals. They're so like, they're just funny little guys with big noses. Um, and I also have like a personal love for elephant seals because when I went to California and I spent some time in California, I got to go on a hike where I got to see elephant seals. And that was just like one of the coolest experiences of my life. Elephant seals are interesting critters. They really are very interesting critters. They are so, like, big. Like, they're just, like, fucking huge. Uh, can you pop up some seal pics? Uh, I can try. Uh, but I don't want you guys to see, like, what if you guys think my search suggestions are cringe? Um, because I just have, like, Firefox open right now. Okay, one second. Um, I'm gonna go on just chatting, and I'm gonna look for some pictures I had no idea seals had this much variation slash races. Yeah, there are so many different species of seal. It's like kind of incredible. I'm going to make a new slide here just for pictures of seals. Show seal pics. Seal, p seal pics. Okay. What kinds of seals do we want to see? Do we want to see elephant seals? Okay, I love this picture of elephant seals because they remind th this particular picture, it kind of reminds me of that alien from Star Wars. And I just think it looks so goofy. Okay, so we have an elephant seal. We want to see a raw seal. Raw seal. Raw seal. Raw seal. Raw seals are such funny looking guys. They are so stupid looking. But they are so cute. I'm going to do this picture where he's like, uh... Part of what I do for work right now, I work as like a reading support teacher at a school and we work out of these workbooks and um, I have to like help them say words. Like I'll be like, oh, what's this sound? And it's like, mm, and oh, what's this sound? Ah, so I just said, ah, and like I was transported back to the classroom. Oh yeah, oh yeah, wait, wait. Bicol seals are the ones you're thinking? Oh, are they the ones with the big crying eyes? I thought you were looking for the ones that look like a snake. Like a snake if it were a seal. Okay. Okay, put that one here. And then I'm going to get a picture of a harbor seal. Oh, harbor seals are so cute. Like, this thing is the seal of all time. I'm so serious. Oh my god, this is a huge picture of a seal, though. One minute. You guys need to be polite, and you guys need to, like, be mindful of the seals around you, please. Okay. Alright, so this isn't, like, the world's best slideshow of seals ever, but it's the one that you're getting. Alright, so... Top right corner, or top left corner. We'll start from the top left. We got, that's a harbor seal. They're adorable. Think of a seal in your head. You're probably thinking of a harbor seal. Top, top right. That one is a Ross, uh, that one is a Ross seal. They look so stupid and funny, but they are so cute. Bottom left. That is an elephant seal. Those things are fucking massive. They're like, Fully grown male elephant seals are like the size of a car. They're like huge and they weigh like two tons. And then the one on the bottom, the bottom right, that is our best friend, the Baikal seal. Oh, okay. 
yeah bottom right is a bike call seal and i think those are also the seals where like if you see a picture of a seal on the internet and it looks like it's crying and sobbing like that's probably a bike call seal my wife says take me to california so we can see the elephant seals baby I'm going to Año Nuevo State Park, guys. That is where you can go in the continental United States to see some very beautiful elephant seals. Um, When I went to Año Nuevo State Park, it was um, actually during the summer or like the early summer. And so the seals, Uh. the seals that I saw on my uh, little excursion were... um, mostly juvenile males and some juvenile female seals and they were molting it's so funny when they molt it's like their skin is peeling off i didn't know before i went that seals even molted which is crazy um but something else that was really exciting when we went because it was all like the juvenile males a lot of them were actually practicing like fighting we could see them fighting each other in the water and it was actually kind of scary like they were just playing is what we were told but they like open their mouths like so wide and they like launch at each other and they've got like little floppy noses because their noses aren't like big and proboscis like yet so they just they just flop around. Hold on. Uh, I'm going to go back to just chatting for a second because I want to see if I can get like, oh, I wonder if I could, I wonder if I'd get in trouble if I did that though. Can I, I want to show you guys like a picture or a video of like an elephant seal making noise because they sound so funny. Like, can I do that? Am I allowed? Can I get, can I get DMC'd for, DMCA'd for, Okay. Live Eleanor reacts to elephant seals. Elephant seal sounds. Elephant seal. No, 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 no. You guys, guys, guys. I looked up elephant seal sounds and I accidentally misspelled it even just slightly. And the very first video I saw, it was. Guys, get close. Guys, guys, get close. It said elephant seal sex. Why would I want to watch that? I don't want to watch that. That sounds horrifying. Okay, Monterey Bay Aquarium has a one minute long video titled The Sounds and Sights of Elephant Seals. We're going to watch this together. Hold on. Start over. Honestly? Hold on. It's giving me, it's giving me issues. Oh my god, I just realized that you guys can probably you can probably hear them already because I have the audio capture. Okay. I'm trying to get the video to work. Help me. Um Eleanor Eleanor reacts. Eleanor reacts. I forgot what I was doing. I'm just going to show you guys now. Okay. You guys have to you guys have to see this. This is essential. Oh my god, these things are beautiful. Look at how big they are. Like, I know that it probably doesn't seem like they're that big because, like, I don't know. Oh, yo, this is totally at Anya Nuevo State Park. I can almost guarantee it. They're crazy. No, like, literally, they sound like they're farting. And it's because, like, all of their sounds, they, like, reverberate inside their big nose, inside their big scary nose. Oh, yeah, that's for sure on Unoyo State Park. That, um, island in the background that you can see there, where there's, like, a little house, uh, stellar sea lions, they love to just stay on the rocks there. And... They're so loud that you can hear them, like, all the way from, uh, you can hear them all the way from the other shore. You can recognize the location from the video. Yes, I can. And that is because I went there on vacation once. Well, I didn't go, like, there on vacation, like, just to go to Año Nuevo State Park, but, uh, I did get to go there and it was very exciting. I liked it a lot. I actually went, like, three times because I liked it so much. It's a very, very exciting and wonderful place. Top five marine animals. 
You are just trying to lengthen my PowerPoint, aren't you, my dear? Um, my top five marine animals are, um, I mean, okay, do you want, like, really specific, uh, marine animals, or do you want just, like, my favorite genres of animals? Like, do I have to pick a species? Okay, the specificer, the better. Okay, well, one of my favorites, obviously, is the elephant seal. I really like elephant seals. Um, my number two... I would say is probably well I just kind of like whales in general but I think I think belugas are really funny and I also think that um I think blue whales are pretty cool too oh I like humpback whales too though um okay so whales is a big one um I actually hate sea slugs <laughs> I I actually I actually hate them I am lying. I tricked you. I love sea slugs. It was a lie. So sea bunnies are also one of my favorites. Um, so hold on. We got elephant seal, whale, whales in general. That's two. Three, sea slugs. Specifically, I love the sea bunny, which is me. I'm a sea bunny, so it works out. Four, um, um... What the fuck are they called? Hold on. I really like... There are these worms that eat bones. And they live at the bottom of the ocean. And they feed off of whale falls. I think they might just be called... They might be called ship worms. But that might be something else that I'm thinking about. Hold on. I really like those little guys. I am definitely, definitely, definitely... This is going to be one of the more, like, macabre videos that I'm going to do. But I love, like, ocean whale falls. And I think they're so interesting just as a concept. Because there's not a whole lot of um, life down on the ocean floor. And there's not a whole lot of food on the ocean floor. So when whales die and they fall to the bottom of the ocean, like, for the few hours that they're there... They create entire ecosystems. It's so crazy. And th th those creatures just like devour them. It's crazy. You, I mean, you've seen like the gifts before of like all those creatures like on top of whales, like, like whale skeletons. And they're like, and they're just like eating it so fast. Yeah, that's real. That actually happens. And it goes that fast. Those videos are not sped up. But anyway, what the hell was I doing? You guys got me distracted. Oh, bone eating, worms, ocean, Osidax. They're genius of deep sea cyboglinid polychaetes. Com okay, they are just called bone worms, but they're also called zombie worms, and they're also called bone eating worms. Marine biologists are not very creative. That's why they're in marine biology and not art. Um, so I would also really, really, really like, uh, bone worms just cause the concept of a worm that just exists to eat bones is really cool. Um, I also like, I'm trying to remember what they're called. There's like, no, I'm, I'm going to skip that one for now. Okay. So I have seals, whales. Living on temporary ecosystems sounds really interesting, but also a real gambit slash bet. Not really reliable from my understanding. Yeah, I could probably, it, it's, it's a little, it's a little bit risky. I actually am very curious about like what these creatures do, like when there aren't whale falls around. I mean, I guess, I guess the thing is, is that if they're not eating whale falls, there's probably other kinds of, uh, oh, you know what they call it? What do they call it? It's, um, it's something fall. It's like, Something, or maybe something snow. Hold on. Oh, yeah, it actually is just called marine snow. So they probably feed on marine snow. That's like biological debris that um, comes from like the top of the ocean and it kind of like sinks to the seafloor. So like if something dies or if it like sheds something, but it's also, come close, I shouldn't say this. 
it's also like poop and stuff like like a lot of deep sea creatures they just like eat like fish poop that falls to the ocean floor um but yeah ew lol poop eater so yeah no i really like uh pretty pretty much any like deep sea creature or like any creatures in the ocean or like any ocean concept that has to do with like extreme environments or like changes between environments like oh my god i eat that shit up i'm like obsessed with it okay so hold on okay wait i missed care's comment manta rays whale sharks upside down jellyfish sawfish and hammerhead sharks those are all some really solid fucking choices those are really good i have to I didn't see yours. Oh, no. Okay, I'm scrolling up. Oh, one, moon jelly. Two, sea bunny. Hi, OMG. Haha, <laughs> twirling my hair. Uh, so, sea bunny. Three, whale shark. Four, blanket fish. Five, or blanket jellyfish. Five, sturgeon. Sturgeon is such a solid option. I don't know why I didn't think of sturgeon. Well, I probably still don't like sturgeon enough to call it one of my top, but, ugh, sturgeon. Um, one of my favorite sea creatures is actually tuna, but it's just because tuna is so yummy. That's a lie. Okay, okay, okay. One, seal. Two, whale. Elephant seal. Whale. You know, whale sharks are really cute. I want to steal that you guys said whale sharks because I think that's a really good option. But whales in general. Three, bone worms. Four, what did I say? You know what? I'm going to say giant isopods because they're so cute. And then five is also going to be sea bunny. Okay, that's it. So there's your answer for everybody who wants to know. For, for my raving fans, uh, giant isopods. I love isopods. We got some isopod lovers in the chat. Love to see it. Love to see it. I miss raising isopods. Me too. Guys, one time I was like, I was just like hanging out in my bedroom with my friends and I looked next to me and just all of a sudden there was a little isopod there it was like straight up just like a little isopod and so I took it and I got a, a hummus container I got a little hummus container and I cut holes in the top and I put dirt in there and I put like dead things in there for it to eat like like leaves and stuff and within like weeks no, not even. Within like two weeks, I had hundreds of isopods just like in my little hummus cup. It was a little overwhelming. I do eat an, uh, eh, an unhealthy amount of tuna cans on a weekly basis, mainly for the convenience, composition, and affordable price. And honestly, that is like, that's pretty based. I think that tuna is really yummy. I like, I like tuna in a can. I like to eat like tuna melts, but like my favorite delivery of tuna, my favorite way to eat tuna, I love really good, really fresh tuna sashimi. Like when I eat really good, really fresh tuna sashimi, I legitimately feel like, like a wild feral cat. I love eating tuna. Ruffle God says, tuna is a really safe fish to eat raw. So you can eat most tuna steaks from the supermarket raw. Just make sure it looks fresh, firm, and red. And this is so true. My wife has made me so many, so many extremely delicious tuna bowls. Just from tuna that we've gotten from, like, Winn-Dixie. Because, oh my god, it's so good. Oh my god, guys, you're making me hungry. You're making me want tuna so bad right now. Oh, I think I have some Spanakopitas over here. Yeah, hold on. You want some Spanakopita ASMR real quick before I get back into things? Here. When I get paid, can we get tuna? And we have tuna for dinner. Yes. Okay. Spanakopita. I don't know if that picked up. Hold on, one more. Okay. Okay, we got a crisp Spanakopita crunch. Welcome to my mukbang. Anyway, I only have like one more slide. Oh, whoops. Well, no, that's fine. Where were we? We were on kelp forests.
It's understandable. Sashimi is a great way to eat tuna. However, I don't have the motivation nor the skill to prepare it. Honestly, it's not that much prep. It's actually pretty, it's actually pretty good. Uh, pretty easy. I used to work at a Japanese restaurant, so I have a bunch of really good sushi recipes up my sleeve. This is so true. You really do. You are so good at making sushi, and you're so good at making anything, like, with raw fish. This is the only reason I keep you around. You're my little sushi-making fiend. He 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 he, my wife says. All right. So, you know, I actually think that I finished my slide about kelp forests. Um, uh, yeah, so kelp forests are a really easy way. And, and uh, the sea otter's effect on kelp forests is a really easy way to see why keystone species are so important and so vital. Um, and so here are some other examples of some keystone species that you may or may not recognize. Um, it's been observed in various different ecosystems, as I was discussing before. Um, and one such example is the wolves in Yellowstone. A lot of people, I think, have heard about wolves in Yellowstone. But basically, the whole thing is that when wolves were reintroduced to Yellowstone, there were a lot of cascading effects felt within the ecosystem, um, such as... The elk population over time actually increased, and since wolves kept elk on the move, it gave willow trees the opportunity to grow um, along the shores of the rivers where they hadn't been able to grow before because the elk were there, like, constantly browsing it and, like, eating it. Um, and so since the wolves kept pressure on the elks, they kept moving, and those trees were able to grow. And the growth of willow trees provided food for beavers and the beaver population increased additionally um before wolves were reintroduced to yellowstone over harsh winters like the only way that elk would really die during the winter is due to like exposure you know if it was too cold or starvation and so um they were just dying less often during the winter um wolves kill elk during cold winter months um and leave their carcasses around which provides food for lots of scavengers like ravens and eagles and even bears. That, I hate beavers for no specific reason. Honestly, I kind of agree with you. Beavers kind of like scare me to look at, especially when I think too hard about the fact that they're like giant rodents. Like, I don't know. That's like scary. That's like a scary thing. Also, Kara says, that beaver, I think, has lipstick slaying. Yeah, that is a beaver. And it does have lipstick. And it is slaying. Um, and incidentally, uh, beavers are also considered a keystone species, funny enough, because they have a lot of unique ways that they can shape waterways because they build dams and stuff. So that's cool. Um, and then one last example of a keystone species um, or at least a species that has really prominently felt effects in ecosystems similar to a keystone species. Because honestly, when I was doing my research, I saw some people being like, sharks are not a keystone species. And then other people were like, actually, sharks are a keystone species. And so it seems like there's like a little bit of back and forth. I think it depends on the exact ecosystem you're looking at. Like if you're looking at a coral reef or if you're looking at the open ocean or if you're looking at, you know, yada, yada. Yeah, it's literally marine biodrama. It's literally marine biodrama, but um, I think that they're really notable because for a really long time, like people were just scared of sharks and were just like, oh, sharks are so gross. Sharks are so bad, but they're actually really important because of the way that they can, for example, carry nutrients and they can cycle nutrients through the environment or they can drive away invasive species by eating them or... um. Just like lots of lots of fun stuff like that. Like sharks are really important. Oh, they're also scavengers. So if there is a lot of Eh, I don't know. I lost my sentence. I'm getting distracted. I got a notification. 
But anyway, yeah, they're really important because they do lots of things for different ecosystems. Even if they're not 100% for certain a keystone species, they're definitely important. This is my seal slide. And then these are my references. I put three of them in APA format and then I got too lazy. And so I did not put the rest in APA format. And so that concludes my little presentation. Thank you very much for listening to me ramble and ramble about keystone species. I cannot believe that I've been talking about marine biology for an hour. I love you guys so dearly for listening to me. Thank you so, so very much. Like I was saying, it's like it's not every day that you get to just sit there and like have people listen to you talk about marine biology. Kara says, I will always listen. And Mary says, this was so fun. I'm excited for the next one. Thank you very, 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 very much. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what my next topic is going to be. Um, maybe I will ask people if they're interested in anything. Um, shameless plug for my Twitter. If you want to follow me on Twitter at uh, Eleanor Rose VT, just like my Twitch username, I'll probably put out a poll or at least like a thread for people to reply to asking like if they have any topics they'd like to see me cover because the world is full of so many things. Post-release of Jaws, the reputation of sharks took a hit, but it seems that during those last years, their perception from the general public. Yeah, yeah, for sure. People like sharks a lot more. A lot more. Which is good because sharks are really, really important. Kara says I'm also considering it. My mega reptile autism. And Mary said this is making me think I should do a PowerPoint night. And I think you should. I think, I think everybody, I think everybody should do PowerPoint nights and just talk about stuff that they like because this was so fun. This really was so fun. Um... So now we're going to take like a fucking hard left because I've only been here for an hour and I want to try to stream at least, oh, excuse me, I hiccuped. I want to stream at least a little bit more. I'm going to take a short BRB and then after I come back from BRB, I'm actually going to play the uh, old PS2 survival horror game Siren. I could do, uh, that's a lot of numbers, percent, do one on horses, but that's cringe. That is, that is not cringe. You can do a presentation on horses if you so wish. This is your Twitch. You control the PowerPoint. And Deary, 5555 says, overall great presentation. I was able to keep up even with a small break about seals. Had a good time. Thank you very, very, very much. That makes me very happy to hear. This was my first time doing a PowerPoint night. So I was a little nervous that I wasn't going to have enough to say or that I was like going to go too fast or just like be kind of rocky with it. But I'm glad that it went good. I'm glad everyone had a good time. Like I said, I'm going to take a small break and then we're going to come back and we're going to play some mildly related uh, survival horror because, um, well, Siren, there's creatures uh the and they kind of look vaguely like they came from the ocean so that uh, there's water in the game there's definitely water um but i will see you guys in like five minutes while i set everything up okay bye uh wait i don't have a brb screen i always forget this uh, intro screen
Oh my fucking god, I'm on Twitter. Hi guys. My model doesn't like this. My fins are doing that thing where they start freaking out. Oh my gosh, hi. Hi, Rowan. Hi. If the if if there's a boobs glitch, I'm gonna quit VTubing. I, I swear to god, if there's a boobs glitch, I'll quit VTubing. Okay, so uh oh my god, my okay. I might just turn off my model for a second uh, while I'm getting things set up. Oh no, oh no, oh no. No no no, I see it happening. So my model does this really f my my PNG tuber does this really fucked up thing. Th can this like it's I don't know. I don't know if you guys can Ah I'm really good at this. Yeah, I don't I don't know if you can hear this, but it's like overwhelming me. It's like it's so loud and I turned it down to two. Beep 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 beep. Okay. Okay. I really hope that my model can handle this because this is this is like baby mode, dude. This is a PS2 horror game. Okay. Yeah, this is like when we listen to the saw trap music in the car. Okay, my controller is not cooperating with me now. Okay, I'm trying to skip this cutscene. Okay. Yeah, this game is really, really hard. Um, I don't know. I'm going to warn you guys right now. I do not know what the trigger warnings for this game are. Like, I don't know what the content warnings are. I'm going in kind of like completely blind. Um, yeah, my, my PNG tuber just decided, nope. Um, okay. Uh, I'm going to turn it off for now because it's acting up. Oh my. Uh oh, something is happening. Is my stream frozen for you? Okay. Jesus Christ. Okay. Scuffle alert. Scuffle alert. Scuffle alert. Watch out, everyone. Okay. But yeah, that was all I wanted to say is uh, I do not know the content warnings. Yeah, the real sign was in my bad computer. Um, yeah, I don't know the content warnings. I'm going in completely blind. I am probably going to suck ass at this game. But I'm super excited. I have to be quiet because it's a cutscene. What is she doing? One of the things that I really admire about this game and that I think is just like so cool is the okay, I'm tr it's the middle of the night. I'm trying to put my PNG tuber back on the screen. But um is like the format that the game is in. It just is so unique. The best PS2 survival horror games are always the ones that only get dubbed in Europe, so they're all British for no reason. Literally, it was so jarring when they were British. Who's there? Who is it? This game is just like so heavily like aesthetically Japanese that it's like it is very jarring. And pre please, 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 pretty please with a cherry on top. Let me know if the audio is bad. This 
escape from police officer. Okay, hold on. I'm just, uh... Uh, yeah, I'm just bumping that. We're switching games real quick. Okay. I am going to die so much. I hope this is entertaining. What? Why? Oh, oh my god. He's coming. Oh my god, he's coming. <laughs> ah. Oh shit. Ooh, oh. oh. <laughs> First death. First death. What's the action button? No, I don't want to do that. Oh, man. Oh, the controls. They're so good. And by that, I mean they're bad. Whoa! This camera is fucked up. Can I get in here? No. It's locked. Okay. But I have to go. Ah, suddenly we're playing Corpse Party. The music! The music! I don't- Oh my god, guys, what if I was scared? What if I was scared? Okay, hold on. Okay, shed, pickup truck. I'm guessing- Oh my fucking god. Oh my 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 god. No. Guys! <laughs> what if I was scared? What if I was a pussy? The police are so scary in this game. They are. He's like, come out. I don't want to. I wonder if he can see me. The It's too dark to see. I feel sick. There's nothing on the truck bed. The door is locked. A key is needed to unlock it. Fan fucking tastic. Dude, my ass is done for. I I can't do this, you guys. I'm going to go hide in my corner again. Okay, yeah, I, I need to get used to the controls for a second. So I hope this corner is like, I hope this is safe. How do I stand down? <laughs> I can't remember. Okay, there we go. So B is crouching. Dude, the music is so good. Siren is genuinely one of the scariest game series. You're so right. I'm already like, I, I can't take it. Ooh, ooh, camera. Okay, I know. I'm trying to... Oh my god, what did I just do? I don't want to be first person. That's like the last place I want to be. I don't I don't need to experience this. On what? The game? Okay, volume up on the game. Okay, sorry. I'm like too immersed in this experience and also Okay. The the way the art direction in this game is like crazy. I watched a video about like Okay. So I have to tell me if this is going to like blow your eardrums off because it was kind of blowing my eardrums off earlier. I'm going to try changing the, oh, I can't do that. Okay. So I have to just kind of mess with it in my volume mixer until it's good. But uh, it was really, really loud for me. So let me turn it down here. And then I'm going to go. Here. Sorry for the sorry for the scuff. I've never emulated a game. Okay, let's see. How is this any better? Can you guys hear it all? Um, I, I don't know if that's much of a change for you guys. Perfect. Okay. No! 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 
No, you can't see me. You can't see me. Oh my god, I'm fucking done for. I'm fucking done for. Uh. I love when game. I love when games just like throw you into it. Like, <laughs> fuck, go, you go. Okay, okay, just uh, uh, okay. No, no. Oh, I'm done for. I'm done for. I'm done for. Yeah, yeah. I'm getting shot at. Turn on my flashlight. Oh, what's that? Police officer's ID. Add it to the archive. Great. I love archives. I love archives. I love archives. The camera. Zigzags. Oh. <laughs> oh my god. Yo. Mission failed. You, you don't say. <laughs> Siren death speeder on 100%. <laughs> you know i'm gonna be honest with you guys i've actually never played any like i've never played any like ps2 era survival horror game firsthand like i've only ever like watched playthroughs so this is my first experience but like i said a couple times i watched a video about siren and i just like fell so in love with it that i have to try it myself I will get past the clunky controls if it kills me. Can I go in here? Oh, oh, close. No, go in, go in, go in, go in, go in. Oh. D okay. Take. Okay. Pick up. Yeah, it was like a video essay. It was like the, the most unforgiving... Close the door. Close the door. Now he can't fucking get me. Lockers line the wall. No, I don't want to shout. Lockers line the wall. Okay, he can almost certainly come in here, right? Like, he can certainly come in. Yep! Ah! Oh, I didn't mean to yell. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guys. Oh, and he's in the doorway. Oh, I'm so fucked, guys. I. Why didn't you guys warn me? Come in the room, please. Okay. This is where we're at now, guys. Go, go, go! I'm caught! Camera! 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 Fuck me. <laughs> Through the damn lockers, man. <laughs> Mission failed. You don't fucking say. Thankfully, the cop's aim is just as bad as your camera aim. He can't help it. He's becoming a creatura. Okay. Escape from police officer. Third time's the charm. That's what they say, right? What? What? Okay, go. I know what I'm doing now. I am an expert. Go in. Pick it up. Pick it up. Pick it up. Excellent. Take your take your sweet time picking that up. It's fine. Okay, in the car. Oh, I'm American. I'm I'm right here. No, I know. <laughs> Seems to have some good difficulty to it. it. It definitely does. It definitely, definitely does. Get in the car! Oh my god. You have to do every action. I have to drive? I have to insert the key in the ignition and I have to drive? <laughs> oh my god. Turn the key to start the engine. Start the engine. <laughs> Run him the fuck over. This is so anticlimactic. Mission accomplished. Uh, I should have picked up that. Uh, I should have picked up that card that I saw. Oh, I keep forgetting. 
Mission accomplished. <laughs> Run over that pig. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah, I forgot the first the first day you could only play as the same guy, I think. But, yeah, the, like... Excuse me? Are you okay? Hello? Excuse me? Are you okay? Oh, oh, my God. What do I do? What Call do I do? An ambulance? Oh. This voice uh, no, acting like... is so supreme. <laughs> oh my god, guys, that's it. It's the siren. Expressions are so freaky. Oh my god. Uh, wasn't this game at least in part worked on by someone who did Silent Hill? I think I think it was some guy who left the Silent Hill team who went on and then made this. Okay. Banks of the Mana River, day one. Oh. Yeah, exactly. The yes. famous link to ocean Go biology. On. See, I told you guys that there's water in the game. Blood. <laughs> See, look, and there's there's red tide. You just connected with me, didn't you? You can see visions. Relax. Although I guess that's easier said than done. Are you all right? I, I, I just got shot. Remind me. Remind me to turn on the captions in a Listen, minute. You have to come with me. You're not safe here. Follow me. Okay, mission two, follow the nun. Reach road to Karuwari with Hisako, yeah. Oops, ah. Ah, narts. Okay, it's fine. We'll probably see this again in fucking five minutes. Oh, who am I kidding? This is a, this is a PS2 horror game. There's no, there's no captions. Alert effect. Screen effect when spotted by Shibito. Sight Jack. Ugh. I I I I'm scared. I I mean I I heard a little bit about that mechanic, but eep. Link. The, the link navigator is so cool. Oh, there's another thing here. I'm not gonna do that right now though. What items do I have? Just the car? No, I have a flashlight. That's it. Why can't I like bludgeon people eyes. with my? Relax and look for me in your thoughts. Oh, okay. Push the left analog stick in the direction of the character to sight jack and align it so that the image is visible. Press the. Press any button, basically. The hold is cancelled when the left analog stick is pushed again. Okay. L2. Um. Do you That's... Um. I don't think I'm doing this right. They are no longer human. Be careful. It will be a while until you... Oh. Oh. This is so scary. Oh, she disappeared. Fucking wonderful. This is really fucking cool. This is a really fucking cool game so far, guys. Okay, I can't go in the blood. I have to go ahead. Okay, so... Uh, 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 
So I don't know where this guy is. Okay, so... Oh my god, guys, what if I was scared? What if I was a pussy? Over here. Okay. The way I'm more familiar with the PS3, PS3 remake of this. There was a PS3 What's remake. Wasn't it? Yeah, it was like... Wait here. O okay. Come over when I call you. I'm concentrating on our surroundings. So I can't watch over you the whole time. Eventually, you'll be able to feel me calling you. Sight Jack can also be used to eavesdrop. Sight Jack has Sako and follow her command. <laughs> How do I... Mm. I don't know if I'm doing this right. Oh. Uh, there's... Uh, 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 where was that? Oh my god. This is scary. I don't like... I, I know... I... I don't like TV static either. Thanks for the stream, it was good. See you next time, I'm heading to bed. Well, you have a good night, and I'm glad that you dropped by. It is always a good day when people come and hang out. Okay, I feel like, oh, oh, oh. I'm so close. Oh my God. Sorry if this is like obnoxious. Okay, is this her? I think this is a... I... Oh, okay, this is her. Oh, okay, yeah, and I can assign them to different... Okay, yes, and I can assign them to different... Hotkeys. Or not hotkeys, but like, I can assign them to different buttons on my controller. So that's her. What is hurting me? Oh, it's probably my my wound. Okay. Okay. Hi. Someone is looking over this way. Keep down or we'll get through this. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, we're on Tutorial Island now. Now we're on Tutorial Island. I was just thinking, like, damn, they really threw us in. But. No, she's she's our tutorial wench. Look at us crouching together. What are we? Sorry, I forgot that wench is a bad word. I take it back. What? Bro, you can't just say that. Oh, a ladder. Um, but I'm following- I'm, I'm, uh, Did she just disappear? Do not fucking tell me she just disappeared. Oh my god, I was about to start freaking out. No, that's okay. Yeah. Pulling up companion. Climb up onto the roof and turn toward Hisako. Be careful. Pushing the left analog stick too far will cause you to climb back down. Nope, we're not gonna shout. Yes, we are going to pull up. Yeah. Awesome. Over here. Okay. I'm not 
I'm trying to determine so far based on what I have done and the little bit of controls that I've experienced. I'm like, am I going to be able to finish this game? Am I going to be able to, am I going to be able to do it? It depends on if the autism sets in or not. I think, I think my wife says, I believe in you. Well, you know what? I believe in me too. Okay, I'll do it. I'm hearing I'll do it. Yeah, I wish to save. I kind of wish I explored a little bit more, but I can always go back to that level and explore a little more afterwards. This definitely seems like the kind of game where they might... Wait, the name changed. Oh, because they want me to be this different person now. Oh, are, are we going to the grocery store tonight? Oh, we are, aren't we? Professor? What is this place? Where Professor, are we? what is this place? I don't get it. What's going on? I told you to wait in the car. But, but what's happening? Oh, but, what uh, is what's this? happening? Why is this happening? This is exactly why I told you not to come. Professor, we need to find the villagers. They must be panicking. <sighs> Please. They shut must up. be panicking. <sighs> What is this? Oh god. My head. Oh my god. From now on, you will do exactly as I tell you. What? Until I call you, keep what? your eyes closed and stay still. Do you understand? What was I meant to do? Okay, come on. Uh, uh, okay. okay. Uh. okay, faculty ID has been added to the archive. Reach the road to Karuari with Yoriko Ano. So, I'm supposed to concentrate and... Listen to your voice. What the fuck was that? Well, what the fuck I'm was that? What? I'm already strange. being shot? What? Going back is too dangerous. Bitch, what are you talking about? Going forward is dangerous. I just got shot. Uh, okay, that's the girl that I'm with. Okay, let me. There we go. Is there another creature out here? Oh, 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 oh. Get it. Get the get it. I'm sorry guys, I'm trying. Okay, this is the one guy. Oh, he can he can see us, can't he? Almost. He can almost see us. Okay, I want the guy with uh, okay. Yeah, I want this guy. Oh, he's on the roof. Okay. This shit is so cool. This is such a unique way of, like, doing sneaking mechanics. Okay. Okay, so that's... That's that guy. That's that guy. Tenma looks like a delectable little morsel. What, what do you mean by that? Oh, fuck me. Okay, I'm running. Oh, he got me. Never mind. Maybe I shouldn't... Maybe I shouldn't run like that. I thought maybe if I turned off my flashlight, like maybe if I turned off my flashlight, that would make me not die. But I was wrong. So. So I'm supposed. Okay. Oh, it saves your hotkeys. That's nice. For sight jacking. Uh, you can run into walls and it makes you stagger.
Okay, he's reloading. Can he see me? No. God, that's so cool. I don't know anything about monster, but I'd like to do horrific things to... To what? Bro, you can't just say that. Can you focus on the damn game? Um. Oh shit! Fuck! They're, they got me! Okay. How the fuck do you sh- This ain't fair, man. This ain't right. This game is a little bit difficult. Literally, get down, Mr. President. Get down, Mr. Professor. I'm supposed to concentrate and listen. Dude, I'm fucking going. Do you mind? You can't see me now, bitch. The way he kills you in like two shots. Crazy. I think in real life people would die if they got shot twice. I love making professors crawl around in dirty red water. Okay. This corner. You would live? Realism? Yeah. Care, you're not human. Literally, Care isn't human. Why do you think you get a say in this? <laughs> Okay, so right now I'm under the bridge. I need to get to the other side. I gotta wait for this fucker to turn around first, though. Which it seems like he does. Okay. Wait, wait. Okay, now's my chance. Oh my fucking god, bitch. The valve is tightly secured with a chain and padlock. It seems it can't be removed without the key. Yeah, I think the whole being possessed by a demon thing disqualifies you from how many bullets can you take in live race. Yes, this is true. Hare says in response, Me and my demon are on bad terms. They would wait until I was on my last dying breath to take over and save me. So they're like death edging you. Okay, I love the fixed camera angle. I love, I love that I'm going the wrong way. Hide under a bridge. What's edging, by the way? I think you should Google search it. Taking a sip. Yeah, it's when you get the corner piece of a cake. Um, I'm not explaining that. You can Google search. You're a big boy. You can use Google. Okay. Okay. No. I was about to go. This guy is scaring me. I don't know where the fuck this guy is, but I know where he is. Okay. Now's my chance. Oh my god, you've got to be fucking kidding me. Oh, I can't go over there. Oh wait, is there steps? Head to... Are you worried with... Huh. I think I'm confused. I think perhaps I might have become a bit confused. Damn it, bitch! Okay. 
Um, top 10 video game characters who are incapable of lifting more than one foot off the ground. Literally. I'm not reading what Care said out loud. Okay. Professor! No! Why are they shooting me but not shooting her? Bitch! Okay. We're gonna try again. Professor! <laughs> Literally, she's too quick with it. She's too good at ducking. She just dodges all the bullets. Maybe I look... I'm supposed so. to concentrate and listen to your voice. Well, I'm seeing something kind of strange. I'm so... Lol. I, maybe I'm overcomplicating it. Maybe I just need to... He just looked back over this way, didn't he? <laughs> Bitch! Whatever, man. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. 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 Yeah. All right. That's fine. Yep. Mm -hmm. Sounds about right. Seems about right. So he sh what? What? I am confused. Uh... Okay. My okay. I <sighs> see. I want to keep playing, but my wife has kind of tempted me with the possibility of tuna. But also. Consider, what if the store doesn't have tuna? So what if I stop playing the game, so and then there's no tuna, and then I stop playing the game for no tuna, but man, I really want tuna. Okay, so I think I don't want to go down there, because I think if I go down there, I, th I think if I try to go straight across, no matter what, I'm going to get killed. This guy sees me, and I, you know what? I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. Just go. Go. Just go. Okay. That was hidden for sex words. As if we... Okay. Okay, so fuck was not allowed, but care was allowed to say edging. Okay, well, I guess you can... I guess you can use the word edging in more than just, like, that way. Like, like, what if you're painting and you're, you're, you're edging the door frame? Isn't that like a thing? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so I'm supposed oh to my God! Yes, you are. Voice. This is a great, great, great. Great. This is, uh, this is great. <laughs> I mean, the bridge has collapsed and it is impossible to go any farther. You don't fucking say. I swear to God, it doesn't just mean. There's no way it just means. Okay. It's a noun. So I was trying to find the verb meaning. Um, as a noun, it means something forming an edge or a border. The crocheted edging of the cloth. The process of providing something with an edge or border. You know what? And I'm supposed to be the archivist here. For shame. For shame. Why can't I just shoot this guy? We've established that I have a gun. Well, I guess it's because I don't fucking see him, bitch. I wish I could just shoot him. Like, I don't know why I'm having such trouble with... Okay, so what am I supposed to... They come here. Did that do anything? Oh, she's on her way, I think.
Man, I don't know. Uh. Oh, I'm seen. I'm being seen. I'm being seen. Zags. I'll lose him. Oh my god, why is she here? We're fucked. Um, the sound design? Why does it sound like that? Uh. Go. <laughs> This is so scary. This is so scary. <laughs> the sound of it. <laughs> I guess that's the word of the day. Last stream's word of the day was preppylicious. Man. Oh man. Oh man. Oh man. My tummy doesn't feel too good about this one. Don't you think we should get moving? Yeah, don't you think we should get moving? Yeah, I do think we should get moving. We're gonna get moving very slowly like this. This game is pretty preppylicious. It's preppylicious in here. Ah! Fuck my life. To Fuck my life. Fuck my life, we're right back where we started. Uh, I can only get shot one more time, do you understand me? I'm just- you know what? Just get it over with. Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> the way she like flailed? Professor! I might have to look up a walkthrough. <laughs> I might have to look up a walkthrough. I okay. Okay. I am going to give this one more. I'm gonna give it one more good old college try. And then I want to take my wife and I wanna put my wife in my car and I wanna put the key in the ignition and I wanna drive to the store. I know that I didn't play this game for that long, but I am having fun, so I will probably so I will probably play this game again very, very soon. And listen to your voice. Okay. My wife gets excited at the sound of car because my wife is like a dog. Who wants to go for a car ride? I'm gonna get shot. Yup. This camera. Why? No, stop it with the fixed camera angle. Stop, I'm gonna die. Ow. Valeria? Why? Wait, wait, wait. Oh, oh, what's your new car's name? Yes, my, new, my car's name is Valeria after my character Valeria. It's Elva Wee Wee. My favorite Spaniard. The May car? No, I don't remember the May car. What? You can't just say these things. Oh man, this is scary. I'm anxious. Is she good? She's like freaking out. I, I don't remember the May car. Can you remind me of the May car? She's borking. Hi. 
guys, I'm scared. Uh, Did we name the green car May? The green car's name was Gawain. Maybe it was f named Gawain, but then we changed it. Or no, maybe we named it May and then we changed. Huh, 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 huh. There's a guy up there. There's a guy up there. There's a guy up there. Guys. Is that a different guy? Oh, this is a different guy. There's a different guy here, guys. There's three. <gasps> oh, and that's the one really close to where I am. Ooh, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Progress. Okay. Guys, I fucking... I'm scared. I... Hmm. What to do? I don't know what to do. Okay, hold on. I'm looking up a... I'm looking up a walkthrough. No, no, we're gonna do this blind. I'm not looking up a walkthrough. I will be strong. Oh, he can see me. He can see me, he can see me. Backing up. Oh, oh, shit! The, uh. Um... happen what the fuck okay okay all right you know that was i tried i gave it the old college try okay so oh i'm still invisible okay look upon me uh, here i am so, that was a lot of fun. Uh, I definitely have to do a little solo practice for this game. Um, but I think I'm going to call it a night for now. But I'm probably, I'm probably going to pick this up again really soon. I'm making my new schedule probably tomorrow. I'll make it tomorrow because my uh, work week is over. And this is definitely going to be on the list because that was a lot of fun. Um, so thank you guys so much for coming and thank you for listening to me talk about marine biology and then uh, get a total of nothing done for what, how long was I playing Siren for? Like 45 minutes? And what happened? I got shot a lot and then my student got shot, which is great. Um, but we're going we're gonna to figure this out next time. So once again, thank you guys so, 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 so much for coming. And thank you for making this a very, very awesome stream. I had tons and tons and oodles of fun. So goodbye, everyone. And I just keep an eye out on my Twitter because I will let you guys know when we're going to play Siren again. Hearts and love and... um. Think about sea bunnies and I will always be with you in your thoughts and in your, I'll be in your dreams. And I might also be under your bed. Goodbye. <laughs>